Okay, uh, so to start off, I'll begin with a small uh, demo, uh, after which I'll be uh, showing you how the various steps of what our cloud to device messaging is, the framework, and how the uh, all steps go on for a proper implementation of cloud to device messaging, and what alternatives could be there for this uh, for implementation of cloud to device messaging. Again. Yeah, so uh, for demoing, I just built a small uh, application uh, which uh, can be installed any, on any phone. And what this does is uh, uh, your application that is there, it needs to register to any kind of service uh, for, from which you need to get, get the notifications or the messages. Uh, this could be done. So, So this one is pretty simple. It just displayed. Uh, it registered itself and it displayed the register ID uh, in notification. And then I can use your uh, any server application that needs to send a message. Get sent to the phone and hello.com. Okay, so uh, a very basic thing of how you're going to send your uh, data from your server, your own hosted server, or uh, through what I've done is over here is from the Google App Engine and send any kind of data to whatever application that you have. Uh, using the push notifications framework that is cloud to device messaging framework of Google. So uh, I'll have to go a bit faster because uh, I'll have to cover a lot of steps and I hopefully uh, will be able to go to all look in corners of what are the basic configurations that are required for cloud to, defi uh, cloud to uh, device messaging. So a bit about me. Yeah, so we'll be uh, discussing uh, old versus push why do you require data continuously on your applications? C2DM, the requirements for C2DM, how does it work, the architecture, then the settings that are required, your registration, how you're going to implement uh, C2DM, your client application and your server application, and if there are any alternatives or if you want to host your own uh, cloud-based service, what you could do, and a quick summary. So uh, before I start a few assumptions, you know Java, uh, you have uh, experience in building apps, you know uh, broadcast receivers, services, permissions, user permissions, application permissions, wake logs, ANRs, uh, a bit about HTTP GET post, and a bit of Python code because that's what uh, the application, server side application is built in. Okay, so to start with, uh, why we require to send uh, any kind of data from uh, your servers to uh, uh, your devices, like in the case of uh, news applications or in the case of any kind of uh, updates to our applications or you want to send updates uh, like uh, various projects have been spawned for sports updates or any kind of updates in real time, you need to send or continuously uh, keep on sending fresh data to your device. So that is the requirement that we want. Now a few approaches are there for sending this kind of data, you use polling. In polling, you are going to use timers which are going to continuously run and after that timer is going to come out, you are going to again go to the server, uh, ask it whether the data has been changed or no. If the change, that is this one over here, whether the data has been modified or no, that will be checked. And if it is modified, then that data will be sent. 
Now, uh, make this advantage over here is, if you're going to run your own polling service, uh, uh, I have uh, taken this data from the Google I.O. presentation that was done two years ago uh, when C2DM was introduced. So uh, the engineers over there, they do that the ideal power draw is about 5 to 8 milliampers. Like when uh, the polling service, the service that is there in the background is running, without even going and connecting to the server, it uses about 5 to 8 milliampers. But when it starts connecting actually to the server, uh, so maybe it wants to connect uh, after five uh, five minutes or so. It will fetch about one uh, 144 uh, milliampers per day. That is about 10 percent of the whole day uh, uh, whole whole day's quota of your uh, device battery. And if you go for 15 minutes uh, polling, that is about 48 milliampers. And you do not want to do this for the uh, particular uh, for the particular device because your user gets uh, fed up and he is going to uninstall your application. So instead of this, uh, push can be uh, thought of as an alternative because we continuously do not know when and uh, when I need to keep on pulling because always the data on the server is not going to be updated or there is no proper requirement or the data may be continuously being updated on the servers. So there are various requirements that need to be met. So that can be handled properly on the server side. So instead of code, we are going to use the push. Now uh, it only has... Uh, it only uses the, the network and essentially the battery only when it is necessary that is there are some kind of updates in the server and you can only present uh, the data uh, to the device. So uh, this how you can do it in your own way is that uh, you can send a simple SMS one that is you run in the SMS uh, you run in an application you uh, uh, put on permissions for acceptance of SMS and you get the URL and uh, you send an SMS to the particular device and that, dev uh, that particular device is going to be notified that you need to uh, update your data. Uh, so this, this, uh, this particular way is costly because there is the cost involved of sending of SMSs which is very costly. Another way is by using a persistent uh, connection that is uh, means it stays alive but it's going to use a very uh, low level, uh, low amount of battery and it is used, going to use some kind of tooling. Sorry, uh, that is the third one. Uh, before that, there is BAP. So BAP essentially is again, uh, in the end, you're going, to, uh, you're going to require SMSs to be sent to your device. Uh, means after the whole cycle of BAP that takes place, you need to send a message uh, to your device which is going to again uh, fetch the data based on uh, the received SMS. So instead of that, uh, we are going to use or we are going to look into uh, what is C2DM, which is Google's persistent connection. Uh, uh, in true sense, this also uses some kind of polling, but uh, Google has figured it out. Uh, and also, if uh, it's free, also it has already been installed on various of the devices while they are being manufactured. So instead of providing your own persistent service, which is going to draw another amount of battery from the device, you can uh, use the existing service that is provided by Google. So, a bit about cloud to device messaging. It's a free lightweight Android framework that is provided by Google. Uh, more efficient because it uses piggybacking on the already existing connection provided by Google. Uh, it takes care of messages by best effort delivery and uh, uh, no point over here, it's only meant for notification. You cannot uh, send in like rich application, uh, rich data or heavy amounts of data through the framework. So a bit about uh, the requirements and limitations. So C2DM is supported from 2.2 onwards, that is from Froyo onwards. Uh, it requires the device to have a Google Market App installed, uh, which is going to install the GSF, that is Google Services Framework. Uh, on the emulator, if you are trying to run on the emulator, you will require uh, one of the Google APIs installed from above 2.2 and at least one Google account which is going to be there on the device which is used for connection or, and sending or identification of that device which is used for sending data to that device. Uh, some limitations, it is best effort delivery. Uh, it's not so, uh, means how the, uh, how the order is that is not predefined. Uh, the payload is going to uh, going to be fixed at uh, 1024. You cannot exceed that. How the data is set, we'll be looking uh, later on. Uh, it's okay because we just need to send the notifications, and we'll be looking that after you send the notifications, you can run your own service to fetch the actual data from your servers. Uh, another important thing: it's in st still in labs. 
the quota that is there, like in the other uh, um, uh, other services like uh, UA and that we'll be discussing, uh, it's not quite clear the quota for pricing. It's not clear. So what do you mean? It doesn't have to be installed to the market. That you just made no point. It does not have to be installed by a market. Yeah, uh, that is uh, your application uh, necessarily doesn't need to be ha be there on the marketplace. Means on-site application from your own network you can provide it. The only thing is uh, it needs Google. So market app over here is not uh, connected any in any sense with uh, your application. You just need it there so that the market uh, the. Uh, Google services framework from the market app that is installed is going to be used by your application. But it doesn't need to be posted on the market app. Market. So, uh, I'll be going step by step how the various uh, things that takes place. Uh, basically, 11 steps for sending in, uh, sending in an authentication and sending the notification from the Google service. So, this is about uh, the architecture of C2DN, your device. This is the Google Cloud, and if you have your own app server, your own app server. So one by one, we'll be looking into all of the steps. So, uh, I guess I'll uh, move on. So I'll move on directly to the steps that are involved. So step zero, you need to sign up for an account uh, for sending so sending of the uh, messages that are there for sending of notification. You need to, uh, as it is still in the, uh, it's still uh, in the beta, uh, it's in the labs. You need to have a account that is whitelisted. Uh, you need to go on to the uh, to the sign up page, and you need to provide the details of how much uh, estimate of how much messages you're going to send. Uh, what is the peak da uh, data, uh, peak number of messages that you're going to send, and it is limited currently to uh, two million messages per day for that particular sender. It also limits to the number of messages that are sent per device. But that again is unclear, it is not given in the quota. So, uh, you need to give a contact email uh, on which uh, Google contacts you and a role email which is tied to your Google account. That is the sender, uh, sender address that is going to be used for sending the notifications. So, first step, uh, your device needs to be registered for receiving the notifications. So, this you are going to do from your application. So, the device is going to send a register request to the C2D front end. Uh, so a bit about so moving on. Two million number of notifications from one server one day. So one e one whitelisted email address can send uh, two million notifications in one day. Just two million. Uh, that again uh, again there is a limitation of per device and per app. So that is not given uh, quite clear. What is the case? So, like, if I run a some kind of a Twitter thing application or something, yeah. do they pay quality to the 100 minutes or something? So, if I do some kind of a design an app around it, but next seriously, constraint will be correct. Yeah, it is. Like, uh, uh, again, the amount of messages that are going to be sent per device, that is not quite clear. But if you have a uh, ma uh, large amount of like your customers, so in that case, if you want to go and exit the quota, you again need to fill a uh, form and you need to request it from Google and they hopefully uh, send back, uh, reply to your request and you can get uh, 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 more amount of quota from them. But that is again a paid service. This I am speaking about free service. How do you send it from organization? Uh, that will be coming later. Yeah? Do I have to do it for every app? It depends. See, the. Uh, registration can be done in two ways, for your device or for an app. So basically what happens is you are going to associate the registration ID with the device or with the application. So the registration ID is going to be uh, issued to the application that is for the device from the C2D front end. Right? So the device is going to ask it uh, the authorization ID for the device. No, I am talking about signing up for C2DM. For C2DM. Uh, step number zero. Yeah, so you said that you have to do it for, you have to get the package name or something. Yeah. Yeah. So if, I, if the same developer is going to develop more than one application which is going to, for which he has to use CD, uh, for this, do you have to request two different uh, users? Uh, no. 
It's fine, I will uh, 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 till when your uh, package name is same. So for two different apps which I created, as a developer, I have applied for C2, C2DM. Uh, it's, it's fine, it's completely fine. For a particular app. Yeah, it's completely fine. Next, I'm creating another app for which again I have to use. Yeah. You have to, you have to request another, you have to make another No, 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 you can use the same authorization that you'll be looking for. You can use the same one. It depends on uh, the registration ID that you're going to get from the device and not uh, the one that is already with the developer. So there are two authentications involved. One is for, from the device, which is uh, the ID for the device. Second one is for the developer. So you do not need to uh, go on to fetch a new registration for ID for every application. Yeah. So therefore, because it requires a device ID, you cannot sign up for C2DM from a HTML5 application. You need an ATR. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You need an ATR. Uh, I am not quite clear about HTML5, but uh, yeah, you need uh, to access uh, GSF. Uh, like you need to uh, use the file that is provided by Marketplace. So we will be looking how that registration takes place. You mentioned there are two ways to uh, register, right? One is for the application at the application level, yeah. and the other one is at the user ID level. Yeah, yeah, that helps. So if uh, coming back to his question, if it is at an app level and then you want it for another app, then you the other app will also require a separate registration. Uh, see, it, uh, see, it depends. Like uh, yeah. you want to have multiple applications from your company uh, on the device, but you need to send only one notification for all of the apps. Right. Let's say there is a limitation, there is a gap on the device level. Like user ID can have that many calls only. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what do you have? So, I think uh, this question uh, coming from the back is different about the limitation of how many number of notifications uh, uh, can be sent. But coming back to the registration process, yeah. if you are talking about the app based registration, yeah. I want to register two apps, invariably they will have two different packages. So, there would be two, step, two registrations required. Yeah. Is that correct? Uh, that is identified here. Yeah. Adding another scenario if I'm doing it at the uh, user level. Won't happen. Sorry? Won't happen. That won't happen. Uh, I'll be coming to that point. Why that won't happen? So, <laughs> so like, so there's a gap uh, on how many notifications can be sent, messages can be sent to a device. So, let's say the application access why I installed is X consumed it first. So, why will be like, what? No, it's fine. Uh, so, I'll be uh, telling you what happens uh, basically when receiving takes place. So only one will be receiving, you can sync with other, uh, other applications that are installed. Uh, do I make my message clear? So if you have multiple applications, only one single application is going to be notified. That I'll uh, be explaining. And then you can go on uh, uh, issuing a service for communicating with other, of your other applications. Uh, I'll get back to the questions, right? Uh, so first step, First step, you need to register. Uh, this is how the uh, man, uh, manifest file looks. So, uh, so simple permissions you required for uh, C2DM sending or receiving, which are uh, distinguished by your uh, app package. Uh, over here, we are using backlog that I'll be speaking about internet connection for sending, C2DM permissions for receiving and uh, accepting and receiving of the message. One important permission over here is a uh, signature level permission. So using this one, uh, I make sure that uh, the messages that are going to be, uh, whenever the application is registering from this, uh, this particular uh, application, when it is going to register, only this specific application is going to receive whatever messages are going to be sent from the uh, C2DM server. So only for this signature, that is for this uh, package name I'm going to get, uh, all the notifications for that particular registration, right? So hopefully uh, I'll come back to you and answer this uh, your question based on this. So uh, after I specify this, uh, so this you need to specify uh, not as a user permission. So this will become a signature. Uh, now, after you've given that, uh, you need to register your app. So you're going to create a new uh, intent registration uh, wherein uh, you're going to issue a new intent for registration over here. You identify your app using any name over here. 
so that uh, it, whenever it is going to get the register, registration intent, it is going to be identified by this particular string. Uh, you need to set over here the sender account, that is from which particular email address you are going to receive the notifications, that is the whitelisted email ID that you have registered. And yeah, you fire up the uh, fire up the registration. So after the registration happens, you need to get the ID. That is, the, uh, an ID will be returned to you. That you need to send to your app server because that particular ID is going to be used uh, along with your like storing it with the username and that particular ID you're going to use for sending notifications to the device. Okay, so. Uh, uh, using broadcast service, I need to handle the on receive event. I will be showing you uh, the various files that are involved. So, if uh, simple, I need to check whether it is a registration uh, action uh, which is going to be provided to me uh, by uh, the C2DM server uh, that is Google Service Framework. I need to handle, I need to get the registration ID over here. I need to get the error over here, and if it is unregistered, uh, this will be true. So, if there are any errors, there are various errors like uh, uh, not in, uh, that is service and uh, not uh, available currently or we'll be looking into various errors later on, they can be handled over here. Uh, if you have your registration ID, you get the registration ID, you're going to start a separate thread. Uh, this thing over here, uh, you're going to start, uh, like you need to send your ID to your third party server that you uh, hosted. So for doing this, you're going to go uh, create a new intent and go out, out of this because uh, you do not want to create uh, the law, uh, sorry, that is the ANR, the unresponsiveness. Uh, so over here, I'll be creating a new service which is going to uh, send the data, uh, that is the ID, and it's going to register on the third parties, uh, my app server. Yeah. So you can use a service which is essentially going to get the registration ID and over here, uh, you can do it in two ways. You use the device ID, right? You use it from the telephony manager, you can use the device ID, right? Or you get the user ID. And this you're going to send it using a post request to your server, right? Now, the uh, two things, that is, you're going to embed some kind of identification. The token is there and some kind of identification is there which is going to be used, the token is going to be used along with the identification so that uh, if there is a username that I am going to use along with the token for sending the uh, particular uh, notification to the device. So I am going to record that ID over here. So uh, this is the server side uh, which has been created in Python. So I need, uh, I have a, uh, I need to uh, persist it. So I created a simple uh, two, just two fields over here, the account name, the registration ID, uh, I need to handle the post of get request, I need to get the account and the ID over here, associate them and just process them. So this later are going to be used for sending uh, notifications that we'll be looking into. So uh, after, your, uh, after your device has been, uh, after your device has got the registration ID, it has been gone to your server, it is registered over there along with the username. Now, you need to go and authenticate with the Google, uh, the Google front end, uh, which is going to use the client login service to get an authentication uh, token based on the sender email ID that you have been registered, uh, which is quite interesting. So using that uh, sender email ID, you will be getting uh, an authentication token. Uh, so this you can use using uh, the client login service, wherein you need to give the parameters, uh, account type, which can be uh, Google or hosted or Google, your email address over here, which is the whitelisted email address, your password, um, the service is uh, AC to DM, and over here, uh, the source can be anything uh, which is a uh, basic format for which is my company, my app, and the version of that particular application. Uh, header will be application slash and uh, form URL encoded. Okay. So after I uh, issue this particular uh, issue this particular request, I'm going to get uh, if uh, there are various errors that occur. But if I'm uh, able to authenticate, I'll get a HTTP 200 response with the auth line, uh, which is basically my token. So this token I'm going to cache it, and this token I'm going to use for uh, sending for authenticating with my front end of my C2DM. 
So message with auth token and device ID are used. They are sent to the server. So the whichever device you want to send the message, the ID of that I'm going to use, and the auth token that I receive, these both I'm going to use and send it to the C2DM front end. So uh, from the app server, what you'll be doing is uh, you'll be creating HTTP post wherein you provide the registration ID. You provide, uh, so these are the various fields that are required, a uh, registration ID, uh, the collapse key, uh, your data which is encoded in the form of uh, data.key equals to value and another one that is uh, delay underscore while underscore item. So uh, the previous two ones, uh, so previous one is straightforward, the device on which you want to send that is the registration ID. Uh, two, uh, important features over here that are provided is collapse key and delay, delay while idle. So, if uh, you want, if your if the device is offline and you are sending continuously sending uh, updates, so you can club the same type of messages under one collapse key. So instead of flooding the device with number of notifications, all of those notifications will be clubbed together in uh, one single message. So the messages are going to be overwritten based on the collapse key. So at once only four collapse key, that is four different kind of messages are uh, supported by Google. And another uh, one over here is delay while idle. So uh, instead of going, uh, so if this is true, uh, whenever the user screen is not, uh, that is you do not want to uh, go and update the user when the user is not using his device, like the screen is, uh, uh, the screen is uh, black, uh, off. So I do not want to uh, wake up the uh, device. I can send in, send in the uh, notification after the device is going to be, so after the user starts using uh, the particular device. So for that, uh, which is going to be handled by Google, uh, the persistent connection by Google knows when, whenever the device is on or off. So using that, I can set it like I need to uh, send the notification when the, whenever the user is up. Okay, so some of the errors. If I do not get the HTTP, uh, so uh, uh, these, uh, the first ones and then later, if uh, if I do not have a proper auth token, uh, Google reissues your auth tokens uh, without without a specific time frame. That is, it is going to change the auth take uh, auth token for that uh, sender email ID. So in that case, you need to go uh, re-login again, send the HTTP POST request uh, to the client login page and get a new auth token. Uh, 503, the server is busy, use PK backing and go and send the message later on, from some later time. Uh, HTTP, uh, so some of the error, hand, uh, error messages uh, based on sending or sending uh, uh, to the device, maybe quota exceeded, one day quota exceeded, device quota for that particular device exceeded, invalid registration, not registered means the device is uh, unregistered from the service, it, is not, it does not currently want to uh, handle the uh, notifications. Message to big, greater than 1024. Uh, missing collapse key. Collapse key is compulsory over here. So, step 6, 7, 8, these are handled by the Google servers. Uh, you do not need to worry about it. What happens is, uh, first of all, your auth request uh, is going to be uh, so based on your authentication ID and the device uh, authentication ID is going to uh, first of all authenticate you. Then it is going to use the uh, messaging queue and it is going to your, queue your message uh, uh, in the C2DM messaging queue. And uh, then it is going to ask the C2DM messaging server to route that particular message. So what happens is uh, first of all it verifies. It temporarily queues a, queues a message over there, holds some messages until uh, it, they are delivered or uh, they are going to be expired. Uh, uh, not sure how, how and when they are going to be delivered, it's just best effort delivery. Uh, if you are going to send mess messages continuously and the previous message was not delivered to the device uh, with the same registration ID and the collapse key, that is same type of message, it is going to replace the existing message. Uh, uh, yeah, it is going to avoid, so that is going to be used for uh, avoiding overload. So previously as I told, four, that is four different types of uh, messages can be used uh, with the collapse key. And then the whole routing is going to be handled by C2DM messaging server. And then the messaging server is going to deliver your message, which again you need to handle uh, on your device now. Now, 
uh, your so google is uh, going to uh, handle delay uh, so it is going to uh, check uh, check into the thing that uh, i am not continuously sending my notifications so that uh, the device is not going to be overloaded with continuous notifications and my battery is not going the device the battery is not going to be uh, worn out uh, so it is going to detect uh, cleverly number of messages uh, per app and per collapse key it and based on that it is going to delay the particular message okay so first few messages are let through as and when they come but subsequent messages may be delayed so this is handled by the queuing servers the logic over there uh, which is known as for attenuation which is handled by the google servers so this is basically used for saving uh, the battery uh, of the user yeah and i previously told you about the while delay by id okay so uh this is how your uh, the google messaging server is going to send uh, the message from cloud to your device using uh, they have a persistent connection sorry they have a connection based on the gdoc service over there and you need to handle uh, so this is how they going to uh, send in uh, whole of the uh, the whole idea behind that is that you going to send key value pairs over here uh and based on the filter that that we have put in your android xml file you are going to receive uh, you are going to receive a call to your on uh, on uh, that is broadcast re broadcast receiver and your broadcast receiver needs to handle the on receive event so uh, before moving uh, on to handling of the event you can you need to handle uh, wake logs because after you are going to go in handling or uh, fetching of data you need to handle wake log over here so again if you are going to use wake log it's not compulsory compulsory use wake log but it is pretty uh, advisable you use one if you do that you need to provide uh, this permission wake log uh, again in your android user uh, your android uh, manifest file uh, you get a partial wake log and so to my to methods that i want to uh, acquire the wake log and release the wake log these are used uh, later on so when i get a message uh, i have provided uh, in the android uh, manifest file which broadcast receiver is going to be call uh, call for whenever i am going to receive my message so based on that this uh, uh, c2dm receiver is going to be uh, this uh, is going to be called so over here i need to handle uh, if it is registration i need to handle registration if it is uh, that was previously done if it is received that is i have got a new message then i uh, again as i told previously those values are going to be provided as data and uh, that is key and value pair so i need to fetch uh, the data based on that particular uh, key value pair so that key value pair you you have already provided from your uh, so, uh, server application as you may recall so that you have given on your server, server application based on that you are going to retrieve it over here and then whatever data is there you can pass it for your application okay so then i'm going to get a wake log over here and start my own uh, another intent over here again because you know we do not want this application to stop working because it is in the broadcast receiver so i start a new uh, another service over here which is going to go and do perform the task of refreshing the data that is there on the device so after uh, this data is uh, fetched uh, totally so after uh, here i can handle the receiving of data maybe by get uh, or post request over here based on how the passing works i can uh, pass what kind of data i want to uh, fetch from my server then i'll handle this uh, fetching of data over here and then i'll release the wake log yeah and the final step would be uh, you acknowledge the delivery uh, after the acknowledging uh, of delivery uh, the c2dm client uh, sends a ack that is your uh, device is going to send the ack uh, and then your messaging server is going to remove uh, that particular message from the queue okay. and again if you want to send uh, recent uh, multiple amount of messages uh, more messages to the same uh, device you can go and uh, repeat the step number 5 and uh, essentially step uh, step number 2 uh, uh 2 and 3 need to be uh, run again if uh, like your all has uh, gone out of uh, your all token uh, has gone out you need to handle the 401 
So, if there is 200, that is uh, quota exceeded or device quota exceeded as well as 503, uh, that is the service is not available, you need to handle them, that is you can catch them on the server and later deliver the, those messages or you can essentially use exponential, uh, exponential back off if there is 503. But uh, if you are go, going on with the quota exceeded, device quota exceeded, you need to try on later. And uh, again, you can, you can also handle the unregistration of that particular app from the uh, push notification service. So this again is going to be handled by your broadcast receiver. So on, again over here, while it is handling the unregistration, uh, it needs to notify your app server, third party app server, that this application has uh, unregistered itself. So now stop sending messages uh, uh, to that particular registration ID. Yeah. So, Quick review of all the steps before I move ahead. So this was the this was the architecture. Eleven steps, easy steps. You register for your you sign in first. Step number zero. You register yourself. You send an ID. Uh, you record it on the third party app server. You authenticate yourself with the uh, client login. Use that particular uh, authentication token and cache it so that next time when it wants to authenticate itself, uh, that is, uh, if it go, runs into 401, it is going to again reissue the auth. And then, uh, using this, that authentication uh, token and the device ID, uh, send your message to the CTDM front end and then your cloud is going to handle uh, uh, requesting uh, that is handling the authentication, queuing it to the messaging queue and handling the routing of, uh, routing of your message and then deliver your message. Based on your uh, receiving of message, you're going to refresh the data on your device and the final step would be acknowledgement of the delivery. Okay. So, that was the basic steps that are uh, that take place while you need to uh, set up notification uh, handling uh, from C2DM that is existing, uh, uh, the Google framework that is there. Uh, some alternatives uh, can also be used uh, instead of if you do not want to go to C2DM, there are some other alternatives like uh, there is Urban Airship. So for Android, uh, they have uh, three alternatives that is C2DM. They have, uh, that is basically it uses the same uh, same framework that is provided by uh, Google but they have you know, their customized library for uh, C2DM. Uh, they have their own proprietary connection library that is Android Helium uh, using which they are going to set up, set up their own communication uh, that is uh, their own protocol they are going to use for communication and push service. And uh, you can also use hybrid uh, like in, you can switch on between the services uh, instead of C2DM or Helium. Now, uh, the C2DM part over here is free. For using Android Helium, you need to pay. Uh, and you can uh, check out their products. You can see the uh, uh, see the uh, cost that is required for Android Helium, but you need to pay for that. And C2DM again, uh, that is free again, up to the two, uh, two, two million uh, quota that is there, which is again same as what Google provides. Uh, X3 uh, again, uh, they have their own uh, particular service for push notifications, uh, pretty limited, simple notifications. Uh, one thing over here, uh, Urban Airship, uh, these have support for uh, rich, rich push, that is HTML5, uh, sending of HTML5 data directly as push notifications, but for, uh, for Android, they're going to use, uh, they're going to use a simple notification service. Does any of them support uh, older yeah, I'll be coming to that. So, uh, good question over here. Uh, large number of devices, I wanted to put that in slide. Uh, large number of devices are still in 2.1 or later devi uh, previous devices. So, these services are not going to be, pro these services are not going to handle uh, uh, that kind of uh, push notifications. Android Helium over here supports uh, from above uh, 1.6. But again, if you want to support it for any kind of device, you can run in your own persistent connection. So that is the alternative if you do not, if you are not able to support uh, that particular service. So you go on to run in your own persistent connection. So some alternatives for running your own connection, uh, like you do not want the hosted service from Google or uh, uh, 
urban airship and you want to run the whole service from your own servers, you can use these libraries. Uh, Deacon is one of them, a push library uh, which is which run, you can run it on your own server. It is built, uh, it is way, uh, to make it lightweight, you use the li uh, lightweight to meet your browser. Uh, and uh, one another library that you could use for is uh, MQ telemetry transport, which is built again by IBM. So uh, there are several other few uh, listings of persistent connection, but these are the optimal ones uh, that are available. If you want to run your own service or if you want to handle devices uh, that are below 2.2. Uh, with that, uh, I'll just go on with the summary. So. We do not want push, so requirement is we want to keep uh, the data that is there updated. Uh, we want to keep the data fresh. Uh, polling sucks because a large amount of battery is going to be used by polling. So we are going to use push. Uh, we could use SMS or WAP, but again, the data charges that are involved uh, makes it inefficient. It's expensive. We could run in our own persistent connection, but that uh, again is not uh, pretty uh, good because that again is going to cost you uh, with the use of radio and internet. And instead of having, having two different connections, why not use the existing one? So using C2DM, which is again an existing framework over there, uh, it requires some work that is there, uh, setting up a, uh, setting up of your application, but that is again boilerplate. Uh, yeah, so single connection, uh, three important points over here, features, collapse key, that I told you for clubbing, similar uh, like number of notifications, your attenuation, that is uh, your, your delay while uh, idle and your attenuation, that is uh, if continuously you are going to send, delay, uh, the Google servers are going to uh, block in the continuous delivery uh, which are associated with the same collapse key. And last but not the least, they are still in labs, so the term steps pretty empty. Thank you.